Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it is time for America's greatest pastime. The Bachelorette is back on the American Broadcast Company, which means it is time for episode one of Ryan Watches The Bachelorette on a Bar! My body is ready. My bike is ready. My cats, they're ready. My TV, it's ready. Charity is also ready. There's a thunderstorm, apparently, so we're gonna have to deal with that on the screen, but oh well. Not gonna lie. My first airing of grievances, and I hope this changes. Maybe this was just a one and done thing. But putting claim to fame on at eight o'clock and making us stay up late to watch this from nine until 11. I'm not a fan of that, Disney. Come on, Walt, Bob Iger. Who do I need to talk to? We want to go to bed at a decent time. Put claim to fame on at 10. No one's watching that. All right, charity season episode one. We once again meet with the man who will forever be known as, why can't Chris Harrison be back? Jesse Palmer. Apparently it's the 20th anniversary of The Bachelorette. Also, why is my camera shaky? All right, coming from a wedding DJ, I'm pretty sure that stupid old wives' tale rumored saying that it's good luck to have rain on your wedding day was created by someone, probably the first couple, who had rain on their wedding day. And they're like, good luck. That's what we'll tell them. All right, favorite moment of the show so far is Charity shouting that she's the next Bachelorette. To an empty film studio? Nice. All right, so Charity's bio. The, these little B-roll clips are giving me the vibes of like an old MTV reality show. Like you guys remember Next or Parental Control? These B-roll clips are reminding me of that show in particular. So not gonna lie, I think because we saw so little of charity during this past season of The Bachelor. Did any of us remember she had this like North Carolina transatlantic accent thing? Like, I can't figure out what the accent is closest to. I just looked it up and it says transatlantic and I don't even know what that means. We learned nothing about charity during this last season and she was in the final four, five? She was like the Chris Daughtry of last season of The Bachelor, and we didn't learn anything about her. All right, we got limo time. This is my favorite part of every single season. It's where you get the most content, the most personality. You get the presidential motorcade looking thing here. You also get these five guys chanting Charity's name, and they're definitely gonna fight each other in three episodes. Back to Jesse in the rain. Here we go, we get the first guy. First of all, it's pouring. Like, couldn't they build a tunnel? This poor guy. He's in a gray jacket too, which means it's gonna, oh no, it's tan. It's gonna be so wet. Okay, now we got an awning. Aaron's great so far. You can call me a, a never mind, we don't like him. All right, y'all, so they definitely upped their game on the profiles of each of these dudes. Like Aaron, they're like, all right, then we're going to film you writing, but also let's get this really awesome DSLR shot of you taking photos. Now an iPhone quality video of you playing the piano. And splashing in the water. All right, number two is usually when we get either the quirky one or the goofball. To so balance it out. We got a Harvard grad, Bethlehem, Pennsylvania. I know that place. The Peeps Factory is near there. Oh? We'll go on. This guy just straight up was like, 
I'm going to give you now the vows that I've already written for our wedding, which might happen in three months because this show is very quick. All right, first of all, it doesn't surprise me that Joey grew up in the Philadelphia area. He just gives off that Philadelphia look. Also, Joey most definitely looks like he's going to be the villain a few episodes in. I also feel like Joey had a pickleball phase. Like, he most definitely was like, for at least two years, played exclusively pickleball as a hobby. All right, a serious production flaw here. So this, um, like, gazebo-looking thing that they built for charity is is making her have to lean over to see each guy through the pole right there. Not great. Also, this dude looks like Elon Musk with more hair. All right, that guy didn't give us any backstory whatsoever. He just told us that he bought a one-way ticket for her to Ohio, which is awful. Um... Okay, this guy, this guy's good. He's doing medicine. He's in college. His name's Xavier, kind of cool. He knows what he wants. He knits! Let's go! He knits, he plays the ukulele, and he works out. I mean... What a guy! What a guy! Top five. Um. Um. Too soon. He's the world record holder for the highest standing jump. I'm annoyed by him, but it's because I want to also jump high. Oh, my dude is yoked. He is jacked. He works out seven times a day and you can't argue otherwise. All right, we got our next one. Um, he has showed up with a tray, uh, like a nurse's tray, and he's a travel nurse with great shoes. What is, I, I'm really afraid of what's, is it an anatomically correct heart? Oh, thank goodness. It's just like shots. Like I was just afraid. These dudes go the extra mile. So if he's in the medical field and he's got a tray, I was just afraid he's going to be like, here's a literal beating heart. Love me. This guy Spencer is either terrified or putting on a show. This guy scares me! I need a reaction. I think my first interaction ever with Cherry seems like maybe we did have a bit of a spark there. We had a moment. Hold on. Okay, pause on Spencer because we have Billy Ray Cyrus entering. A pro wrestler from Orlando, Florida, who showed up looking like he had a hanky breaky heart. This guy's getting, this guy is definitely the wild card that will have the fun personality for at least four weeks and then get eliminated before we even remember who he was. I hate that they had like three of the guys on this show get cast and they're like five foot seven. Like my height. The rest of them are like seven foot four. This guy made the terrible mistake right off of the bat. It's raining and he's wearing a very light gray 
jacket, but he also was the one that finally made the charity pun and said that he wrote a check to charity with his heart. All right, so they told Charity that there's a guy that she has a history with who wanted to be on the show, and they gave him the opportunity, and he's about to come out of the limo right now. I don't know if this is, like, somebody that's been on the show before or if it's just, like, some random person that they're hyping up for no apparent reason, but they're about to open the door, and we're about to find out together. Excuse me, I'm burping like crazy. (laughs) Goodness, who is it? I haven't this Nehemiah Oh it's it's her brother Oh this is a sweet moment okay okay He's the best brother my best friend and my rock This is sweet That is a sweet moment Good job ABC See, I was about to say, I was like, is this dude going to go undercover? He is! They're giving him the worst disguise, but he's going to be a bartender for the first night. Which I don't know whether to be excited about this being a cool defensive thing, or also acknowledging the fact that this was like every major plot line of a Disney Channel sitcom, where the person has a brother that spies on dates. Like, wasn't that an episode of, like, Lizzie McGuire or Sweet Life of Zack and Cody? Also, look, if you guys have watched these over the years, you know that before every single Ryan Watches The Bachelor or Bachelorette on a Bike episode, you get a look at my dude, my homie, Mr. Eric Thickenbinder, who gives us that two-second look at the forecast. Well, since they changed it up this time around with that, like, claim to fame show beforehand, we didn't get a look at the forecast from Eric Thickenbinder. Guess what we just got? Eric Thickenbinder! Let's go! Woo! My man! Thank you for the forecast, Eric. Thank you for your service. Look, I'm just saying, like, I feel so bad for the production team that had to stand in the pouring rain and film these gazebo shots. Also, Jesse Palmer is still getting poured on. Like, like they, they, they could have shot this in another room in the mansion. Her first question to him was, what are your favorite qualities? Second question, how do you feel about vulnerability? I mean, I would hope the answer is, like, I like to be vulnerable. I don't think any of these guys are going to be, like, yeah, I'm not really that vulnerable. Like, you're not going to be able to get anything out of me. Sorry. Not a good first impression. All right, so they hit it off, to no surprise, because remember, I already said that this dude is our top five. But also, can we just talk about the fact that, like, they can barely talk to each other because the rain was pouring and clearly this mansion has a tin roof? You can just hear while they're talking. So Nehemiah is undercover as a bartender. But but hold on. I I just got to take a moment. Let me get my remote here. The guy that he talked to first here at the bar, like, that's, that's definitely Clayton, right? From two seasons ago. Doesn't that just look like Clayton? Anyway. All right, y'all. I think because I'm burping, it's because I haven't eaten much. So um, it is time to take a break for some BJ's. BJ's! Pow, 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 pow! I got a salad. Nothing cracks me up more than the fact that Nehemiah's stint on this episode as the bartender, undercover, um... The amount of time that he is on camera during this episode is going to end up being more than some of these guys. Iconic. I got my BJ's. Mixed it all up. Little chicken Caesar salad. I need some lettuce. It's different. 
We got Spencer again. Ben Platt vibes from this guy. Like facial expressions, man. I, I'm getting Ben Platt vibes from this guy. Hold up, y'all. Okay, so Aaron already got time with Charity. Now he's, now he's back. Where did he get a piano? Was there a keyboard in the closet of the mansion that was just lying around? Where did he get? Where did this man get a piano? He's not even singing. He just played the piano and talked. <laughs> All right, I told you I liked this guy, but he's on thin ice. Guys, I'm not gonna lie, we're um, an hour and 10 minutes in, and I feel like this second hour could have been put into the first. Like we're getting so much content from Charity's brother Nehemiah in the worst possible incognito whatsoever. Standing behind the bar talking to all the guys and then like 20 seconds of actual conversations on the couch. I do like this dude who's the medical salesman guy. He's, he's hitting it off really well. Crush can't hang. That was very zoomed in. Nehemiah is so uncomfortable. Why would you go undercover during the first episode and listen to all the guys talk about how they kissed your sister? Brayden's been talking about this kiss for about five minutes. Everyone's discovering how much of an ego this guy has. Brayden's an un unlikely, unlikely villain. Nehemiah's also about to admit that he is um, actually not a bartender. Everyone's like, yay! And there's gonna be at least two of them that are like, oh no. Yeah, Braden's like, oh, oh no, oh no. Oh no. And in this moment, Braden realized he was going home tonight. Well, he's revealing to her that he did what he did. She's got her jacket back on. Is this guy going to be on for the whole season? I mean, I'll be honest. I do appreciate the fact that he was here and you had to spy on the inside. Because at the end of the day, a lot of times these first couple of weeks, you never really know kind of who are the ones that are the red flags. Nehemiah is kind of identifying that for her. Oh, 
She has pulled Brayden away. Cue the Chris Daughtry song, I'm going home. That's two Chris Daughtry references in one episode so far, wow. Of course, Nehemiah was trying to say that Brayden was being braggadocious about the kiss. I think, honestly, Brayden was just really celebratory. He was really excited about the kiss um, and just kept talking about it way too much. Um, I think there's a little bit of ego, but again, it's hard to tell, like, just 45 minutes into the, like, little one-off conversations, like, I don't think he goes home. I don't think he goes home. But I think he, he could possibly be the red flag villain by, like, episode three. I turned away for like two minutes to throw my trash away and Brayden got the first impression rose. I thought we were sending him home with suitcases. Now they're macking on the couch. I guess we said not arrogance, but confidence. Okay. The guys are mad about the first impression rose and the intense music begins to play in the background. Oops, excuse me. Oops. Goodness! Good, I need some gas X. I'm burping a lot tonight. Let the rose ceremony begin. It is 10.45. Um, is it a 15 minute rose ceremony? Crush! I know. And I hope you guys can respect that. Xavier, not surprised at all, gets his uh, rose. I should come over here so you guys can see the screen. Xavier gets his rose. All right, Charity, who's next? Chemistry with Charity. Who's next? Joey. Joey. Good, it sets him up for his villain arc. This, he's gonna be the villain by like episode three. Not him, but Joey. Again, Caleb gets the rose. Suitably so that he gets eliminated by week four and we all forget who he is. The Elon Musk guy, not him. Not him. Well, I guess we're not gonna see him anymore. Who? Did we even meet him? Adrian! I already forgot about Adrian's. This was a good reminder that Adrian existed. Go Adrian! Guys, this rose ceremony could be two minutes long. Who? Yeah, not a good move if you haven't talked to her. Oh, hey! We love to see it. There's only four left. I don't think Spencer is going to get a rose. Spencer's going to run for political office, though, if you like. Josh, this is going fast now. This is like rapid fire now. Now I think we only have one left, right? I can't count. Why is Spencer crying now? Gentlemen. Gentlemen. Charity. Charity. It's the final rose tonight. When you're ready. When you're ready. Who's it gonna be? Gentlemen, 
sorry, but if you did not receive a rose, please take a moment and say your goodbyes. <laughs> All right, so Spencer gets a rose. Uh, some of my uh, top picks so far, Aaron got a rose. Uh, Braden got a first impression rose, which surprised everybody. Um, Spencer ended up with a rose, which was a little bit of a shocker. Um, there are some good dudes in this lineup. I mean, some solid, solid dudes in this lineup. I'm excited to see how this all pans out. I can already tell that there's going to be at least three or four guys that could be there for the wrong reasons or at least toxic in some way, shape, or form. But, folks, we got ourselves a good season. I'm feeling good about this one. Feeling pretty darn good. Crush and Jack both went to bed. Oh, wait, no! Crush, I need you. Oh, gosh, I need your thoughts. Hey, what do you guys think? Oh, my goodness, and a Jack, too. We got a bonus Jack. Hey, bud, what do you guys think? Oh, we got the... We got the six minute sneak peek. Well, we're gonna go and skip that because I need to get a shower. It's almost 11. What I was saying was I need to go get a shower after I get myself off of the floor. Um, but gonna be a great season. Stay tuned. I'll be on that bike a bunch of times over the next couple of Mondays, uh, watching and taking you all through the latest episodes of The Bachelorette. Um, yeah, thanks for watching. See you next Monday. Say bye. Or show us your butt, it's okay. <laughs>